four weeks to like get it all done, get it shipped to us and everything. So we're going to be delayed guys to Van Luce. and don't come back Sorry. no sneaking peeks just stay away okay, yeah. okay. we trust you I don't yeah. trust you but yes <laughs> all right and uh he told me that the next few rounds people were like you know he pitched other ideas and they're like no 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 we'd, we'd prefer for you to do card trick so right now I'm gathering the stuff that I need um in order to get around because obviously I won't have the vest with me but the outfit happens to have enough pockets to where I'll be good to go. <laughs> Some cosplay isn't like that, you know. Once I put it on later, though, I think I'm going to do one of those uh, shots like Christian Huey and them do. You know that shot where it's overhead showing you the whole thing? Yeah, I think I'm going to try for one of those. Couldn't hurt. So now I'm back home. Um, I didn't snap much from the masquerade because honestly, I was too busy just having a good time. It was just a nice social gathering had by all. Even had some people there I didn't expect, like one of my friends from work was there. I had no idea. Turns out he's related to one of the people having a birthday. Well, two of them, actually. Anyway, point is, wow, who knew? Even though given I game on game night with his nephews and he's even at work mentioned his nephews by their first names and yet I still didn't take the time to make the connection silly me did make for a great moment whenever I found out though um, he was standing there we were all standing in line to get to the food because they'd all laid it out it was a potluck and then I suddenly went you what are you doing here? I, I said his name, but I'm, of course, censoring names, as I always do per my policy. I was like, I didn't expect to see you here. And he looked at me, and he's like, well, I didn't expect to see you here either. So it was a nice little moment. And gender-swapped Catwoman went over great. And, I mean, heck, it's my first time really going out there with an obvious crossplay. As I've said before, Osgood was a cheat. It, it really was. It wasn't me really going out there. This one... This was me going out there. I think there was only one person in attendance of... Yeah, still a friend of mine, but f just just for some weird little reason. It was giving him culture shock, but he, he's young still. So it, it it's one of those where he's perhaps not experienced enough yet. But it was just the kind of culture shock where you could see the gears turn in his head and he's like, uh, but you're a guy, but Catwoman, but a male version of Catwoman, so, okay, you're a guy, but y you could tell it was just turning in his head. And he even admitted, he was like, I, I don't know why I'm currently having this problem, I shouldn't be. <laughs> so, it was just one of those where, you know, you react and you don't know why. But it was amusing, it was very amusing, I, I had fun with it. Um, but yeah, I, I got to socialize with people and it was just awesome. Although, of course, I I hung out with the people as they were cleaning up and even helped out cleaning up the party. But it started to die down around 8, which 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 drove home to most of us that were still there. Are we getting old? Okay, so I was the one making that joke, but the point was, this like, we, we thought this party was going to last longer than this, man. But people just started naturally leaving at 8, so the party ended early, you know. But... Still got home around 10 because of the cleanup involved. So, big place. So, we, we like a team, just cleaned it up. It was, it was nice. And would you make up your mind? There, finally. She couldn't get comfortable during that whole thing. <laughs> anyway, so I consider tonight an absolute success. Both in party-wise and, well, my cosplay-wise. So Catwoman now goes in the archives. It's my first completed outfit, and anytime I need one, I know that that one will at least be waiting in the wings. 
Now I'm just going to spend the rest of my night relaxing and, well, <laughs> just being here. Although a D&D &D update, which is nice. Um, I was talking to our dungeon master on the Tuesday night, and, well, two things. One, now that summer's getting ready to happen, us being at the water park is going to be a thing of the past. Yeah. So we're going to have a meeting on Tuesday to figure out what the heck we're going to do, because we can't go back to the library because they won't have anyone there to supervise us, so to speak. But we're a resourceful group. We'll figure something out. Um, and meanwhile, with that, um, we are going to re-roll characters at some point. After we take care of this Strahd business, then we're going to start a level one campaign, completely fresh, all that stuff. So some of the other members of my party have decided things. She was telling me what they had decided, giving me an idea of what our party is going to be. And I was kind of thinking, well, now what would I want to be? And then she said, well, you were curious about that experimental thing that Wizard released, right? Near the beginning of the year, Wizard, the people that make Dungeons & Dragons, released a experimental class called an Artificer. What they are is sort of a steampunky inventor uh, that uses both mechanics and magic together. So instead of using things like gunpowder or stuff like that, it's arcane energies that they use for their devices and things like that. And as soon as she said that, I went, I, I could feel my eyeballs go, you mean you'd let me do that? And she said, sure, because it's a level one campaign, little off-the-wall things and stuff like that to totally work for that. So, we're doing it. And I've already got the character cooking in my head. I'm not sure what race I want them to be, but at least I know a class. I need to do some studying because I'm obviously going to be doing the rolling um, on Tuesday. So, need need to be ready for that one. I'm between maybe a dwarf, or I might just go with a human. That way I can place the personality I want without the other bits, too. Because certain races, you kind of expect them in D&D uh, &D to have certain little traits to them. But a human can be a blank slate that you can place an idea upon and make it work. I'm thinking crackpot arcane inventor. A bit kooky, possibly not all there in the head because of all this stuff. Hopefully not too over the top to where it's distracting, but still, I kind of want to play a character like that. Given that my current character is a paladin, so he's the straight and narrow type, I kind of want to go kooky for the next one. <laughs> Show my more sense of humor about me. So, we'll see how that goes. Shout out to all my Diamond Clubbers, by the way. I would do the signal, but I've only got one hand free since the other one's holding a button right now. But right now, they are in Austin, Texas at South by Southwest, enjoying a live episode of Night Attack. I'm not watching it right now, because I would have come in late. So I'm just going to watch it, the recorded version, this week. So, love you guys. Although, because Justin Robert Young snapped from behind Possum Posse while they were singing Guy on a Buffalo. Guess what's stuck in my head right now? Side note, if you've ever, if you've never seen those, look them up. They're pretty funny. The whole premise is that they had just found this really old show that featured a guy riding a buffalo. That's it. And then they just wrote a song based on the footage that they had in front of them. So, yeah. There were like four episodes of it, I think. And it's... <laughs> it's fairly brilliant, not gonna lie. The Possum Posse is just one of those groups anyway. I need to play some of their stuff at some point on a Triple M. I just need to get a hold of them to do so.